Hey everyone, I'm super excited you're here today and that you've made your way to my channel, Kelly Renee Every Day, where I'm here to teach you the fundamentals of crochet. Now we are going to be continuing looking at creating this project, which is a cotton washcloth. And today we're going to be in our second part of our five part series where we're going to be looking at the chain stitch. So the five part series is first getting the yarn on our hook, which is the, with the slip knot. The second is this one, which is the chain stitch. Then we're going to continue on and look specifically at the half double crochet stitch and then working our pattern and finally um, finishing up our project and tying off our ends. Now I will link all of those videos down below for you to watch as you're working this project. But if you end up liking what you see here, please like this video. And additionally, I'd love to have you part of my community. So please subscribe. Okay, let's get into things. Okay, now we are ready to start working on the chain stitch. Now the chain stitch is really important and it's another, another step in starting every single project in crochet. So we need to chain a certain amount in order to set the, the uh, width, if you would, of our work, or in this case, our washcloth. Now by chaining, that is gonna set up kind of the foundation for then the rows to go back and forth. Now, um, so we're just going to practice the chain stitch before we really start looking specifically at this project. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this away. And as we get started with our chain stitch, the first thing we need to do is put our um, yarn onto our hook. So in the last video, we did do our um, slip stitch. If you didn't get a chance to see that yet, you're going to notice that there's going to be a video right up here that if you needed to go back and look at practicing that, that slip stitch, we spend some time there. That's our first video in this series. This is the second. I'm going to go around one and a half times, pull up a little loop, put my hook in the back here, pull through to make the loop, and then snug up. If you need a little practice, like I said, go back to that video um, part one in this series. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to get the yarn around our hand before we start working this stitch. Now to do that we're going to lay this over and I'm going to then wrap around twice on my index finger. I'm going to curl my bottom fingers down. I'm going to put my middle finger in the back of my hook here where I have my loop on my crochet hook and I'm going to put my thumb in the front. Okay, let's try that again. I'm going to take the side that's going over to my ball of yarn. I'm going to put it over the top. I'm going to wrap around my finger, curl my bottom two fingers in, put my middle finger on the back side of my hook and my thumb on the front. To hold my hook as I'm going to be crocheting, I am going to put my thumb on the front flat here and my, my index finger on the back and just kind of wrap my fingers around like I'm, like I'm holding a knife. And what that does is it's going to have the hook then pointing towards me. Now once I'm in position, I am ready to start crocheting. So let's kind of start that again. We've got our, we've got our loop from our slip knot on our hook. I'm going to take my yarn, go over the top go around my finger, curl my fingers in at the bottom, my middle finger is going to go on the back side, and my thumb on the front. It just kind of holds this in place, okay? And we're going to kind of, we're going to see how it kind of changes as we go up. I'm going to put my thumb in the front, my index finger in the back, and then curl my fingers around like I'm, like I'm, you know, really cutting with a knife, and that's going to have the hook towards me. Now the hook is what's going to continue to pull the yarn through, as we as we work our, our uh, chain stitch here. So now the chain stitch, like I said, is gonna be the second thing that we do when we start every one of our pieces of work. We're first gonna start with a slip knot to get the yarn on our hook. Now we're going to chain, okay? Now instructions will always tell you to chain a certain number, but we're just gonna randomly practice chaining here so that we get used to creating them. So to create a chain, we are gonna take our yarn we're going to take our hook and we're going to we're going to put it underneath the yarn in this way. Now, this hook is then going to pull our yarn through. And it's going to pull it through the loop that we have on our 
crochet hook. Now to do that, we can't just pull it through like this because it's going to get stuck. What we end up doing is we end up pulling, we end up as we pull it in, we rotate it down and we go and we pull it through and we slightly like push up if you would on that loop. And then that's why I'm holding this with my index and my thumb as I pull through. Okay. And now I've got another loop on my, on my hook. Let's try that again. So hold that, that um, stitch that you just created. Make sure that your um, yarn gets back over the largest part of that barrel because that sets the size of the loop so that my hook can get through. Don't let it get down to this size because I'm not going to get that, that um, hook through. I need to have it on the larger part. If you need to increase it, just pull up on it and get it over the top here. Okay, and then remember it's loose, it's not tight on here. And, and this is gonna be probably the biggest um, thing that you need to practice is just getting used to not getting too tight, not getting too loose. We don't want it to be like this where the, where the loop is much larger and we don't want it to be super tight, okay? We just want it really freely on there, setting the size of that barrel. So let's do it again. Let's curl underneath. And as we go forward, we're gonna hook onto that yarn and rotate down and through the loop. And then pulling back up, getting it onto the largest part of the barrel to set that diameter of that loop. We're gonna go back around, rotate towards yourselves and down and then through that loop, through that loop. Now there's a little bit of pushing and pulling here, okay? Now my fingers, the back, my back finger, or my, I should say my middle finger, which is on the back, and my thumb on the front, I'm gonna keep kind of creeping them up as I make each one of these chains. I'm gonna go down underneath again. This is called yarning over, just so that you know. <laughs> and I'm gonna get it hooked in my hook there, but then I'm gonna rotate it towards myself and down. And then as I'm doing that, I'm pushing up on my on my hook so that I can get it through that loop. Okay, and then I kind of pull it up and I get it back down on there. Let's do it again. I'm gonna rotate around, rotate towards me, catch that, catch that yarn, rotate down, pull through, and then back up. And then push your push your um, your uh, hook through. Now, something that I'm noticing right now as I'm as I'm working, and it, and it happens every so often, is that the um, my hands get a little bit sweaty. <laughs> okay, so if you're having a problem where you don't feel like the um, yarn is moving freely, something that you can use is a little bit of like baby powder. Okay, so I'm going to put that on my hands, and that really helps to kind of make things slippery. So I'm going to put my, my um, yarn back on. I'm going to rotate around my, my index finger, put my middle finger in the back, my thumb in the front, and I'm going to curl these two fingers over. Um, something that I forgot to mention is by doing this, it really creates a little bit of tension so that you've got a nice straight um, yarn coming in. You can't have it loosey-goosey like this because then you're not going to have nice even stitches. This is the part that's gonna take practice, okay? Right now, it's probably gonna feel a little awkward, honestly, okay? And um, and it just is gonna take sitting down and looking at this video, trying it yourself, stopping, starting, pulling it apart, and, and continuing on. So let's do a couple more, and then we'll look at what we have in terms of the, um, the actual uh, chain. So we're going to go under, rotate, hook it, rotate towards ourselves and then down and then pull through. And then get that loop back up on the larger part of the barrel. Rotate, yarn over, right? Rotate towards ourselves, down and through that loop. Get that loop on that larger barrel, yarn over. Rotate towards yourself and down and through that loop. Now, let's take a peek at what we've created, okay? We've created a series of chains. They actually look like little braids or V's, and each one of them, you know, counts as one. So when I look here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then I have nine, and the loop that I have on my um, crochet hook does not count. Okay, so I've got nine chains that I've created so far. I'm gonna continue on. I'm gonna kind of wrap around again, 
middle finger in the back, thumb in the front, our knife um, hold, if you would, on our, on our um, hook. We're gonna yarn over, we're gonna pull, we're gonna rotate towards ourselves, down and pull through. Get that loop back on, yarn over, rotate towards, down, pull through. Yarn over, and, and again, I can't stress, you don't wanna be too tight here, you don't wanna be too loose, you just wanna be kinda just right. <laughs> You're gonna yarn over, rotate towards yourself, and down, and pull through, and then back up. Yarn over, rotate towards yourself, down, and pull through. Okay, now you're gonna wanna continue to do this and just make just make random lengths of chain, okay? And, and again, this is gonna take practice. So I'm gonna pull this apart. I'm gonna start over one more time, do a couple more of these chains, and then I'm gonna leave you some homework to do. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a length. I'm gonna wrap around to create my slip knot. I'm gonna pull up that little loop pull through, snug up. Then I'm going to put my finger, put the yarn over my fingers and my hand, my left hand here. I am going to go over the top, twirl around my finger so that there's like two loops around. My two fingers down here are gonna stay like turned in. My middle finger is gonna go to the back, my thumb to the front. Now this hold is considered traditional. I learned this from my grandmother many years ago and this is where I tend to go to. As you look around on YouTube, you're gonna notice that there's other cro many other crocheters out there and there's a lot of different ways you can hold it. So I encourage you to kind of um, check it out. But, um, but again, this is pretty traditional. Now, as you work, if you, if you stay in this position quite some time, um, you gotta kind of build up muscles, if you would. And so your hands may cramp up if you're working on this a long time. Just take a break, okay? Walk away for a little while and you will build up stamina. So again, I'm gonna go over the top, twirl around, curl in my bottom fingers, middle finger on the back, thumb on the front, and now I'm going to yarn over, rotate towards myself and down, and pull through that loop. And get that loop back up on the larger part of that barrel. I'm gonna yarn over, rotate towards myself and down, through that loop, get that yarn on the larger part. Yarn over, rotate towards and down, and through the loop. Yarn over, rotate towards and down, and through the loop. Yarn over, rotate, through. Yarn over, rotate, down, and through. Yarn over, and you're just gonna keep doing this. Now, as you create chains, you're gonna sneak your fingers up that, that, that uh, middle and the thumb. I do it every two to three-ish. One, maybe two, and then I sneak up and so on okay so just keep practicing your chain stitch this is going to help get you used to holding the yarn and also creating good tension so that you get um, your chains to be about the same size okay so as you practice the chain I encourage you to start over pull it apart, start it over, start with your slip knot, and continue to practice. When you feel comfortable and you have nice even chains, you're ready to move to part three by touching the video up here in the upper right hand corner. And, um, and we'll continue by practicing the stitch that we're gonna be using for this washcloth, which is called the half double crochet. All right, see you soon.